smart molecule impact technology that helps reduce the risk of head injuries, uh, impact. Um, and, and so that's kind of been our big focus is keeping kids healthy, keeping kids on the field. There's obviously been a big push over the last few years with head injuries, concussions, player safety, uh, and, and also on the education side. And we think our products are a perfect fit for keeping kids healthy and, and in the game. So, and not only in the game, in the classroom, involved in their everyday life, because I'm sure a lot of people listening have seen pretty serious head injuries that have kept kids out of school, out of, out of work, out of sports for, for weeks, if not months, sometimes career ending. So our goal is just that at the end of the day, it's helping reduce the risk. It's a risk reduction products. Uh, and it can be used across all sports at, at this point. Uh, and we also do a lot of other other things with our company, whether it's OEM, private label. We do stuff for companies like Adidas. We do stuff for United Sports brands. So there's a lot of other bigger components of our business behind the scenes that don't get as much uh, publicity as our main products. But we, we have a lot of great things going on, and, and we're continuing to grow and, and push through even these, these times we're going through right now, we, we have a lot of really big opportunities uh, on the horizon for us. Are you guys doing anything, Kyle, with the military? I know that a lot of times, you know, the shell shock and things like that is pretty much the same effect as, as the football field. Are so you the technology, it? yeah, so the technology that we use in our products is called D3O. It's a smart molecule technology. It, it's a, a company out of, of London, out of England, uh, they've won the they've won the Queen Queen's Award for innovation like two or three years in a row now. Their technology is used all across the military in helmets, in boots, in padding, in in everything, in armor across the board. And we use that same technology in all of our all products that we offer, our main products. Awesome. So I'm going to take just a moment. For a short public service announcement, parents, concussion and baseline testing, you've got to do it. It's not that expensive. Don't put it off. You need it before your kid plays sports. Uh, if you need help with that, I will volunteer to point you in the right direction. I will not take a referral fee, but I will, on behalf of the Sports Philanthropy Network, get you set up with training for coaches, athletes, parents, educators, and administrators. Uh, the Sports Philanthropy Network will work with businesses, foundations, uh, and teams to help fund and run baseline concussion testing programs for schools and youth sports organizations. Uh, Kyle, if you don't mind, your experience with baseline testing and the use um, and benefits for the teams, are you seeing in your field and working with Game Breaker most parents and teams doing the baseline testing? Absolutely. I think... It's even really trickled down now as young as, you know, youth entry level tackle football leagues around the country are, are starting baseline testing from, you know, ages eight, nine, 10. Every, there's a lot of different laws and rules in place now for when you can even start playing tackle football, but, but it's not even a football thing. It's, a, it's all across the board with different sports. They have them at youth levels. They have a mandatory at high school levels, pretty much nationwide. College, absolutely. The pros, obviously, you know, without without a doubt. And there's so many great programs out there. There's a hand apps that are you could just download the app and have it right on your phone. Now, obviously, I wouldn't only. I'm not a doctor. I have I can't give medical advice, nor will I. Uh, and I wouldn't necessarily tell people to rely solely on an app. Um, but obviously, if there, you think there's issues, take your kids to a doctor or a medical professional. Uh, but there's a lot of great technology out there these days that can really help uh, basically educate parents, coaches, uh, especially there's a lot of volunteer parents and coaches out there, uh, and, and at least point them in the right direction and, and give them some basic education into what to look for. Yeah, and Kyle, I think here's the thing. We're not naive, right? You got a junior or senior in high school or a junior and senior in college, and you got the scouts out watching your kid. 
you see these kids saying, coach, put me in, put me in. I'm fine. I'm good. Coach, I'm good. Put me in because they know the scouts are watching them and they want to get picked up. It's one of the biggest struggles that I'm seeing, you know, at that level is kids who shouldn't be playing, going back out on the field, fingers crossed that they are okay and that they do get picked up, right? Yes. So I, yeah, I mean, you, you, that's going to happen. That's going to happen all, you know, the, there's a, there's a fine line that athletes walk every day between their competitive nature, their health and safety, their futures. I mean, it's a tough balance, right? If, if you're a kid who doesn't get a lot of looks and you know one day, one game, that there's a college coach called you and said, we're going to come watch this game. And in the first play of the game, you get your bell rung. And, you know, this coach came all the way from XYZ to come see you. And you're, you think as an athlete, your future's in the balance. It's really hard for a 17, 17, 16 year old kid to make that decision to say, you know what, I should probably sit out. I, I have a little, you know, I have a little, my bell rung, a little ding or whatever they call it. It's a, it's a tough, it's a tough uh, fight to fight. Right. And, and you know, the, the kid might be fine. He might not have a concussion. He might have a concussion, he or she, right. He might not get another opportunity to play in front of a coach like this. He might get an opportunity. It could, there's so many if ands or buts involved around head injuries and player safety um, I would just strongly recommend everybody. There's always another day. There's always another opportunity. Um, obviously, you have our attitude uh, with Game Breakers specifically is a lot of leagues and almost every sport in the country mandates a mouthpiece to protect your teeth. But you could always get new teeth. You just go to the dentist and they give you new teeth. What you can't get is a new brain. You only have one brain. Um, hopefully, a lot of kids plan on using it the rest of their lives. And so I would encourage parents and players and athletes to make sure you're doing the right things to keep your brain safe, first and foremost, um, because you can see stories about kids who have suffered brain injuries, and it is not good and it is not fun, uh, and it will ruin your life. And, uh, you know, there's, there's, there's that out there, and that's kind of leave it at that, I guess. Yeah, I love it. Great points. And I think it goes back to the hard work. The being consistent every day, all the time, building that belief, having that effort. You know, the kids who consistently work hard day in and day out are the ones who are consistently, for the most part, doing the right things. Uh, I want to take just a moment, remind you that you're listening to the Legacy After the Locker Room podcast with today's guest, Kyle Offrey. want to send a special shout out to one of our radio personalities, Joe Madden. And remind you that the Freedom to Rock podcast, 5.30, I'm sorry, 5 o'clock to 6.30 every Friday night Pacific Standard Time. Tune in for that. Joe's on it. It's a lot of fun. Kyle, back to you. I want to go back to the business that you got into coming out of the NFL. Um, I guess, first of all, you go into the NFL and they're saying, prepare for your exit, right? Like, that's what you guys hear all the time any pro sports, prepare, prepare for what you're going to do next. What's your advice to guys who don't have a chance to prepare? For example, Adam Monroe from the NHL was on a couple weeks ago, tore his ACL, career was over just like that. What's your advice to the guys who don't get a chance to prepare their exit plan? My advice is a, you can always prepare an exit plan starting in high school or even early on in college. Um, no, have an idea of what you want to do after sports. I strongly recommend that every student in the country, and not even athlete related, every student in the country should take a general, whether you can offer it in high school or get it freshman year or college, you should take a general business class a business and economics class, knowing business 101, the ins and out of business, you would be surprised how many athletes uh, are completely lost after sports, not because 
they don't know what they want to do. They just don't know how, what steps they need to take to get there. They don't know, you know, how understanding working up the ladder, just like, just like most athletes have to do from being a freshman to a senior, you, you know, you got to earn your stripes. You got to learn the system, learn uh, your ins and outs of business. I would tell people that the, the best opportunities uh, will, you know, you won't even know they're coming. They'll just, they'll just appear and just be prepared to them. And, and whatever that is, whatever that passion is you find, if, if sports don't work out, I would say take it and run with it and, and go all in with it. Um, but also prepare yourself starting in high school. Again, pay attention to business class. Uh, if they offer it, a lot of schools these days have that. Um, or whatever you want to do. If you want to be a doctor, if you want to be a, a lawyer, you know, take your, take your biology class and your physics class. Have all that basic education, that basic knowledge under your belt so that when the opportunity presents itself or doesn't present itself, uh, you have a, you know, a plan B. Um, I'm not a big believer in plan Bs. I'm, I'm a big believer in focus all your energy on your plan A. Uh, and then if it doesn't work out, go from there. Um, but a, a lot of stuff in the sports world, the principles of being an athlete, um, and even if you're going to be a professional athlete, if you're going to be a, a big time athlete, you should know business anyway, because I hate to break it to a lot of people, but uh, starting with even high school sports these days, high school sports, college sports, uh, and professional sports is all a business. Uh, it's big business too. Uh, so understanding, again, basic business and basic economics will help you even as an athlete, uh, especially starting uh, in, in college. So that's kind of the advice I would give people. And once your sports career is over, if it ends abruptly, if it ends unexpectedly, uh, know that you will have other opportunities. There'll be other great opportunities for you. Uh, and make sure that you also use your career in sports uh, as an opportunity, even in high school, to make sure you're building your network. Uh, always be networking, never burn any bridges, uh, whether it's with coaches, administrators. Uh, I know a lot of guys that I played college football with, um, even coaches that I played. I'll give you an example. My GA when I was at college at Mississippi State was a guy named Joe Judge. You know that name? I don't. So I'm Joe Judge is, is, is now the new head coach of the New York Giants. Oh, well, there you so go. Joe, Joe Judge was a, a, a GA, at Miss, a special teams grad assistant at Mississippi State when I was there. When I then transferred out of Mississippi State, went to New Hampshire, Joe Judge became the assistant special teams coach for the New England Patriots. When I had a chance to play in the NFL, I signed one of the teams I signed with was the New England Patriots um, because I knew one of the coaches that I GA'd with knew my name and brought me in for a workout and I did well and I signed with the team. Uh, and now, you know, two, three years later, or four years later now, he's the head, head coach of an NFL team and one of the best organizations in the NFL. So, and I, you know, I know him, I know him very well. He went from, again, uh, a low-level GA at Mississippi State, a guy who was low on the totem pole in the coaching world, to an NFL head coach uh, through, you know, he's a brilliant coach and he's going to do a great job. But you never know who you're talking with. You never know who you're meeting with. You never know who you're surrounded with as an athlete is going to be what in five, ten years. The world of sports is very small. Uh, it's very connected. And you will always have opportunities that present itself from being part of the sports world, whether it's as an athlete or outside of the sports world, but the opportunities will always be there. Uh, if you always do the right thing, treat people with respect, build good relationships, uh, you will have endless opportunities in or, in or around the sports world. I think that's great advice, Kyle. You said something that I think every guest on the show has said, and it's do the right thing. It seems like that's the phrase that resonates with all pro athletes, do the right thing. So parents, kids, everybody who's listening to the show, you've heard it over and over every week, do the right thing. Uh, Kyle, we're just about ready to wrap this up. Less than a minute left in the show. 
final thoughts from you, words of wisdom. Again, I, I just want to reiterate what we've already talked about for, for anybody 